welcome to Indiana University in the beautiful town of Bloomington, home of the Hoosiers, the Kinsey Institute, and even rock musician John Mellencamp. And welcome to the chemistry department. I am Professor Sarah Scrablack, and with me today are my co-authors on our recent perspective to the journal Physical Chemistry Letters entitled Seeding Bimetallic Nanostructures as a New Class of Plasmonic Colloids. Hello, I'm Chris DeSantis. I'm a graduate student in the Scrablock Laboratory, and I work on the synthesis and characterization of bimetallic nanocrystals. Hi, I'm Becca Weiner. I'm also a graduate student in the Scrablock Lab, and my research involves investigating the growth mechanism of branched bi and trimetallic nanostructures. Hello, I'm Angela Radmilovich, and I'm an undergraduate here in the Scrablock Laboratory, and my research involves the synthesis and surface properties of bimetallic nanostructures. Hi, I'm Matthew Bauer. I'm a recent Indiana University graduate, and I currently work in the Scrabble Lab studying the effects of halides on bimetallic nanoparticle morphology. In general, our research program provides new synthetic strategies to nanomaterials, and we are especially interested in providing new colloidal plasmonic platforms composed of two or more metals. When irradiated with light, the conduction electrons of plasmonic nanoparticles are driven by the change in electric field to collectively oscillate. This property is referred to as localized surface plasmon resonance. It is this property that gives rise to the colors of metal nanoparticles dispersed in solution. The specific color achieved depends on the composition, the size, the shape, and the architecture of the metal nanoparticles. In fact, nanoparticles of varying sizes and shapes are what account for the colors in many stained glass windows. Take, for example, the Rosewell House here at Indiana University, where you can see beautiful stained glass. Of course, artists long ago did not actually know that they were making metal nanoparticles to use in their works. And here you can see a variety of metal nanoparticles that have been prepared in our laboratory. Because they have differing compositions and structures, they scatter different wavelengths of light. Over the past 10 to 15 years, chemists have developed precise methods to control size and shape of single metal nanocrystals. Shown here are electron microscopy images of a few examples. By coupling theory with experiments in both ensemble and single particle form, criteria for the rational design of plasmonic colloids for applications in surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy, photocatalysis, and more are emerging. However, only recently have high-quality bimetallic nanostructures been accessed via synthesis. This achievement allows chemists to study the optical properties of bimetallic nanocrystals. One of the major breakthroughs that is facilitating the synthesis of high-quality bimetallic nanostructures is the use of seeding methods. The basic idea is to introduce a pre-synthesized metal seed to separate particle nucleation and growth. A seeded method is just like making rock candy. Here we have a supersaturated solution of sugar, which forms the basis of our rock candy. This stick with sugar granules acts as a seed upon which the supersaturated solution of sugar can nucleate, producing this rock candy. Our perspective highlights recent examples of bimetallic nanostructures achieved by seed-mediated methods for applications in colloidal plasmonics. Shown here are examples of gold-silver and gold-palladium nanostructures prepared by seed-mediated methods, where their light scattering and absorption properties depend on the unique bimetallic nanoarchitecture and provide new multifunctional platforms. For example, with gold-palladium nanostructures, the optical properties of nanoscale gold can be coupled with the catalytic properties of palladium to facilitate light-mediated catalysis or insight into the mechanism of catalysis through surface-enhanced Raman spectroscopy. In the Scrabillac laboratory, we are developing seed-mediated co-reduction as a general route to architecturally controlled bimetallic nanostructures, where seeds serve as preferential sites for bimetallic deposition. In a traditional seed-mediated method, only one metal is deposited on top of a seed, but with seed-mediated co-reduction, two metals are deposited on top of the seed simultaneously. Shown here is one such example, gold-palladium octopods. Characterization by electron microscopy indicates that the nanostructures have eight branches and octahedral symmetry. Elemental mapping indicates that the nanostructures are primarily gold and palladium decorates the surface 
and localizes at the tips. The specifics of the synthetic system are outlined at the top of the slide. And here is how you make them and can use seed mediated methods in general to make bimetallic nanostructures. To begin the synthesis, a surfactant, C-tab, is added to a reaction vial. Next, gold and palladium precursors are added to the vial. First, the gold is added. The solution is then mixed. Next, the palladium is added. Again, mix the solution thoroughly. Ascorbic acid is then added. This will serve as a reducing agent upon addition of the cores. Upon addition of ascorbic acid, the solution turns translucent. The solution is then diluted to 25 milliliters using water. Finally, one milliliter of the previously centrifuged and concentrated gold cores are added to the reaction vial. The reaction vial is capped, gently shaken, and placed in a 25 degree Celsius oil bath for approximately two hours. After two hours, the vial is removed from the oil bath. As you can see, the solution has turned from a light pink to a blue-gray color. This indicates that gold and palladium octopods have formed. We'd like to thank you for spending time with the Scrabillac Laboratory at Indiana University. The future is bright for bimetallic nanostructures as a new class of plasmonic colloids.